Welcome back to the town final. Yes, we have had an epic night here and we are going to get straight on, straight into the final. From Evie Keithley, it is Liam, the Duster, Dunster! Up against Liam, he has given us a lot of entertainment. He has won this event twice already. Let's just get him out and let's get the final on. It is Jordan, the Welsh wizard, Shepherd. <laughs> Yes, the eyes. Between him with the eyes and you, Joe, with your head, you make a right old mixture. Imagine you on a Tinder date. Our two ladies. So two days of high drama, appalling action have come down to this. Wales versus Scotland. The two favourites for the tournament, Liam Dunster versus Jordan Shepherd, Simon Webb and Donald Coatsworth in the final for this match. And it should be an absolute cracker. Like you say, the two favourites, it wasn't difficult to call them for the final, although anybody, any one of the players out there could have stopped them getting there. I did call this final, which, like I say, it wasn't a, a psychic thing. Yeah, the two um, two standout players from the draw at the start. There are obviously a number of great players in the tournament, but in terms of what they've achieved over the last two, three, four years, yeah. um, absolutely the two standout players. So no surprise to see these two in the final. But the way this format set up, you know, this <laughs> they had to dodge some bullets along the way. Yeah. Oh, well, I say they did. I mean, especially Jordan Shepard. Liam Dunst has actually only dropped two frames on the way to the final. So he's, he's, he's cruised through. Yeah. And that cut break is not his friend right now. Yeah, opening dry break from Liam Dunster. One thing we've seen from Jordan Shepard in every match he's played so far this weekend, he's got off to a slow start and put himself under pressure. And he knows he can't afford to do that against a player of Liam Dunster's class. Definitely not. If Dunster gets his nose in front, he will absolutely torture him. And as we know, Sheppy's, <laughs> as much as Sheppy's temperament has improved very much, he is still a very animated player. He is. I think he's got a phenomenal temperament now. I think his temperament's probably been in question over the years, but I actually, I really like the way he goes about it. He knows he can't control his temper at the table, so he, he lets it out. Yeah. Uh, you'll see him, you know, bang his cue from time to time and show his frustration. But I don't, I don't think I've seen him play many shots in the last two years that haven't been 100% full focus and concentration. No that, no, that is very accurate. And if that's, then that's all you're trying to do is, and he manages to, he's always on the front foot in that regard. And he's got off to a very fast start here. This, this finish was not as easy as Jordan Shepard has made it look. A very quick fire, reverse dish to start the match, and he moves 1-0 ahead. This final is still a race to five, like every other match in the tournament. Still got a 30 second match time, and it is 30 seconds a shot for the first 15 minutes. 15 seconds a shot for the second 15 minutes.
Well, it's Jordan Shepard's turn to come up dry. So Liam Dunster's first opportunity at the table. And he has a couple of problem balls to work out, depending on which colour set he wants to go. There's problems on both sides. The black being the biggest problem. To be fair, all the yellows have a pocket. The only ball that's a real problem is the black, and it, it, there's room for it. It will go down the cushion. I don't think it's in a position where he can double it. The yellow, well, no, the yellow would be out the way, so the double's also an option. And I was about to say there is one yellow on the right-hand side of the table, which he needs to consider, and he's gone straight after it like all the great players do. What I find frustrating as a as a player is that how easy these guys make it look. I mean, it just looks effortless. That you know, it's it's something that you know you pick up your pool cue and that's what you should be doing. Yeah, and anyone that's ever played the game knows this really isn't an easy game. It can be made to look easy at times, but that's the skill in it. The control and the patterns they both play with, and all the top players play with, just makes the game easy. So you feel like they're always playing easy shots, but they're not. It's the, it, it, it's just such an incredible skill to have. At no point during this visit has Liam given any consideration to moving that black. So he's happy where it is whether that's for a double or a pot down the rail. That's his choice. And I'm pretty sure it'll be the double now. Be looking to sc screw the white into that red and hold the, the white where the red on the left-hand side is. And that's a pretty good spot for that double. Excellent from Liam Dunster. Responds to Jordan Shepard's reverse dish with one of his own. And both players are up and running in this final. And that was excellent. He made that look very easy. It's just, it, it, I'm, I'm, it's not often I've lost for words, but I just love watching them. I mean, it, it was really clever the way he went about that finish. There was a couple of problem balls. It, it looked easier than it actually was, and he just yeah. picked it off, you know, one ball at a time, and uh, it made very light work of yeah. what was a very hard finish. And as you said, you know, maybe your normal average player would have tried to maybe break that black out a little bit, make it a little bit easier. Liam just was not bothered. He, he didn't have any worries as to where that black was. Well, we have seen Liam Dunster use the tap break in this tournament. When he's been in front and he's looking to run down the clock, he's used the tap break. In this example, he has used it as a tactical weapon. He believes he can outplay Jordan Shepard in a tactical frame, and therefore he doesn't want to have a big... He doesn't really want to get into a dish fest with Jordan Shepard. No. I don't think anybody wants to get into a dish fest with Jordan. thing is you let Jordan at the table with the balls there and he can clear them within like literally within a minute within a minute and a half they could be gone and when it's a race it's such a short race you can't do that you can't do it I mean Liam Dunst is more than capable of of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with with Jordan Shepard in a, in a sort of dishing contest but he definitely holds the advantage in a tactical exchange not that Jordan Shepard can't play the tactical game. We talked about it in his semi-final match. He's very, very clever when it comes to that side of the game as well. But he's he maybe maybe doesn't quite have the patience and and the want to play this style of game in the way that Liam does. Yeah. I think Liam's Liam's tactical is up there with Jordan's pace. Well, 
And we saw after the tap break, John Shepard has attempted to go for a finish and in doing so opens up the frame. And now all these reds for Liam Dunster have a pocket. He's got to play a couple of nice positional shots. This isn't a clear run to the line, and the black only goes to the bottom left, and it, the one of the reds only goes to the top end of the table, doesn't go to the middle pocket. So he just needs to be careful on a, on a couple of shots, but they're all there for him. It's a, a rare error. Yeah, the, you could, the reason I mentioned it just before that shot was the fact that I could see him getting to a position where it was going to be difficult for him to get onto the black. So yeah. he's tried to play into the black to nudge it down the table. If he'd got a full contact on that black, it would have been, would have been really perfect. simple. He just caught it three-quarter ball, and that's why the white spun away. But it's a great recovery pot. Excellent from Liam Dunster. Used the tap break to his advantage, earned the opportunity and made no mistake, a very clinical finish. And as much as Jordan Shepard will be hating Liam tap breaking, there's probably an element of respect in Absolutely. there for, uh, for the fact that he's prepared in this atmosphere to do what he believes yeah. is the right thing. Oh. What I do like about this here um, at Murphy's Doncaster is the fact that Liam is getting a lot of respect from the crowd. He's getting a lot of fist pumps. Now, this is against one of their local guys. So, you know, it's a great crowd. It's a really respectful crowd down here. Um, and, you know, he's, he's getting as much love as, as Jordan is when he's, he's taking out these finishes. It's, it's more a respect for the game rather than the, the player. Yeah, and it's fair to say Liam's earned that respect over the last few years with what he's achieved. They want their man to win, but they're, they're happy and prepared to cheer and, and respect a great, great clearance and a, a, a great uh, way of playing. Of course. Well, that in off off the break from Jordan Shepard is a disaster. Already 2-1 behind. And Liam Dunster has this table really just at his mercy. Yeah. His first finish of the day was, was tricky and, and pinpoint. This one doesn't need to be. This one's much more wide open. Yeah. He's definitely got more of an area that he can play into rather than a, a specific point. Yeah, absolutely. And it's sort of almost a natural route round the table. And this is the key shot. If he can get good position off this next ball, then it will all come out quite nicely for him. He just needs to land anywhere. He's got the pretty much half the top half of the table yeah. to play in. He, he probably really wants to leave the red on the left-hand side as his last ball. Yeah. So anywhere on the red on the right, and he's OK. Just play that with needs plenty of left-hand side. Needs that to travel or stop. He's just about got far enough. He can drop this one into the centre and hold the white. Two balls away from a 3-1 lead in this final.
And excellent again from Liam Dunster. Perfect position all the way through that reverse dish. And he does complete the job with it. Goes 3-1 in front. And perhaps we've seen uh, Jordan Shepard under a, a lot of pressure through this tournament. Found himself a couple of frames behind a couple of times, but this is probably the, the worst position he's been in any match so far. Yeah, very much so. Not just the two frames behind, but the two frames behind to a, a Liam Dunster and a Liam Dunster playing incredibly well. And a Liam Dunster tap break. Well, of course, we've got a tap break coming up, you know, now. And it is another excellently executed tap break. He He's tap broke probably four or five times so far in this tournament. Mm. And I don't think he's got more than two balls past the center line at any time. <laughs> it's just, but he's never looked like like fouling with no, that either. It's been no. excellent, uh, you know. As, as a referee, he's, he's kind of a dream because you don't need to be looking for that foul break because it's not often he does. Well, perhaps a touch early, Liam deciding to go for the rundown of the clock. Used every one of his 30 seconds <laughs> on that shot. He's only two frames ahead, and there's still 16 minutes left on the clock. So this is a, this really is a pivotal frame. Jordan Shepard has to keep his composure, and if he can win this frame, he will have time for a, a clearance of his own, because it will be his break next. Absolutely. And as we've seen, Jordan can take clearances out in 90 seconds if they're there. You cannot cannot risk it with Jordan. The problem Jordan's got, he needs to find a way of creating an opportunity and but without pushing the boat out too far and just because if he loses his frame it's match over uh, so he needs to kind of really consider he's going to have to take something risky on at some point but it's when does he do that and yeah. how does he do that 15 seconds shot clock in operation <laughs> lovely 15 second shot clock uh, call there by mr ryan broad He really is uh, torturing Jordan Shepard here, using every second of his shot clock every single time. He's not going to open up for Jordan. Jordan is going to have to make something happen somehow, some way. And he's going to have to do it pretty soon. Well, he has an angle now to cannon into the back, into the pack. And that's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Yeah, it's not, not the worst, not the worst uh, outcome. Just got one ball to get out now, really. It's a really awkward ball to get out. Don't know if he can do it off this red to the left center. He's just got to be careful. Well, obviously not. Yeah. I'm not I'm sure. Trying work, I'm trying to work out exactly what he's going to do. I thought he was going to try and leave an angle on this ball, but I didn't. Oh, he did leave an angle. Oh, what a shot. My word. What a shot from Jordan Shepard. Absolutely ridiculous. That's incredible. That is shot of the tournament. 
And we said Jordan Shepard needed to make something happen to get back into this match. Wow. He has done that. That was incredible. Well, I have seen every single shot played in this tournament so far, and this, for me, is the shot of the tournament. He has to get so close to that first yellow. He has to arc it round that first yellow and to get the, get the control on the shot. That is incredible. I think that's the shot of all three tournaments so far. That's just absolutely ridiculous. And under that pressure, knowing that he's 4-1 down if he doesn't get it or he doesn't do something, yeah, he's he's if he doesn't if that shot doesn't come off, he's losing this this yeah. uh, this title. That that's without for me that's without question. And look how fired up he is now. And we're going to be three three yeah. in a matter of minutes, and there's still well, a matter of seconds, I should say, and there is still going to be over ten minutes left on the clock. Yeah. One thing is for sure, Liam Dunster tap break or not, this is not going to be ended by the match clock. Well, yeah, he's going to be going to be close potentially. <laughs> and just as incredible as that shot to win frame five, he comes up with a 45-second break and dish to win frame six. Quite incredible from Jordan Shepard. He is not ready to give up this title just yet. Is this going to be our final shootout that we wanted, Simon? It may well be. Um, it really could be. Pretty certain we're going to see another Liam Dunster tap break. I so want a shootout. I so want it. And he just gets the balls past the centre line that he needed. Well, the referee in you there, Donna, you were thinking <laughs> that may have been close to a foul break. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm going to have to go home, freeze that frame and draw my line. <laughs> Yeah, it was very close, but the referee has adjudicated it to be fine. Absolutely, and that's what the referee is there for. I need to turn off from ref mode. Well, in the previous frame, Liam Dunster kind of left the challenge to the previous tap break, I should say. He left the, the challenge to Jordan Shepard. He wanted Jordan Shepard to go for that finish. He was happy for him to go for that finish. But Jordan just came up with that piece of magic to win the frame. But he's not going to change his mindset. He still believes in what he's trying to do. And he's going to want Jordan Shepard to try and push the boat out again. Yep. John Shepard's waiting for his opportunity. This is what he did really well in the previous tap break frame. He waited until there was a chance for him to make something happen. There's no point being rash and just throwing it away. And of course, this time round, he's in no rush to do it because it is 3-3 instead of being 3-1 behind. And again, your point about Jordan's temperament has, has really counted here. He's not forcing the issue. He's not losing his temper. He's not lashing at balls. Yeah. Three years ago, two years ago, perhaps, that he, he, he'd lose the match off the early, the way the, the 
early, early part of this match went and the way that tap break went, I yeah. think that he probably loses the match. Whereas with what he's achieved in the last two, three years, the level of consistency he's, he's developed with the way he is um, off the table now, you know, he's play, you know, he's got the temperament on the table to be able to deal with it. Yeah, he really has grown as a player, to be fair. But then again, he's been, he's been playing this game for how many years now? I mean, it's ridiculous. He started as such a young child. Another person with a very sort of old head on their shoulders and has been on the circuit for a very long time. Yeah, but I always used to say with Jordan, when Jordan turns up and plays his best, he wins tournaments. When he turns up, he, he could lose to anyone. You know, he can lose first round to any any player in the world because he's he's that style of player. He used to attack too much. He used to um, lose his head when things didn't go his way. Yeah. Um, whereas now, you, you know, you're going to have to play incredibly well to beat him. And he's turning up to tournaments with that belief. He, he knows that, he, he believes that. He's like, someone's going to have to play great to beat me. Yeah. They might do, you know, like, this is Paul, this happens, yeah. but they're going to have to do it. I'm not going to yeah. give it to them. And that's why he won three major titles on the IPA Tour last year, as well as many other titles and, and money matches along the way. He's had an incredible 18 months to two years. And he is a very humble player as well. He's, he's very gracious in defeat. You know, again, like you say, maybe the Jordan of old may have been unhappy and blamed luck or run. You don't get that from Jordan anymore. Yeah, he actually is. Um, surprisingly, when you see the way he acts on the table sometimes or the, the way he acted, in, you know, in days of old, that actually even then, in the heat of battle, he'd be frustrated in his show of frustration. But actually, uh, you know, I've seen him lose matches, come up to the player, you know, an hour later and, and then have a very good conversation yeah, to say, well played, yeah. you know, you really, you know, in the heat of battle, maybe not so much, but yeah. he doesn't do that so much right now either. We saw it after that semi-final, you know, he was quick to praise to Kev and, and um, you know, really humble in, in victory. Absolutely. Oh, this frame is edging Liam Dunster's way. Mm -hmm. He's edging ahead in this tactical battle. If he wants to, he can take he could take a finish on now. The yellow does go past the red to the left center pocket. He can play it off the jaw and off the red. And the yellows in the bottom half of the table all have a pocket. So yeah. there's no problems for Liam here. And this is the thing with five minutes of the match to go. Do you take the clearance? Does Liam decide to to try and play safe, knowing that you may not get another frame in. Well, this is this is the interesting decision, and that's why I, I was sort of hesitant when I said he's t he's gained the tactical advantage because mm -hmm. he knows that the finish is there for him. This is Paul is about understanding when your opportunity is there and when to take your opportunity. And sometimes players in a tactical exchange can wait too long. And Liam's probably saying to himself, he can't risk that. So the finish is there. Take it. Get yourself one frame ahead. Yeah. And if Jordan Shepherd comes up with a minute break and dish so be it yeah Now where he's got it absolutely perfect, he knows he's, he really can't fail from here. He'll just use his whole shot clock. Yeah. This shot should be played with about two seconds left on the clock here. Yeah, he'll be using his ears, just waiting for the beeps to start, and then he's uh, knock it in. It's a very classy frame of Paul by Liam Dunster as he moves one frame away from the title. Four, three ahead now of Jordan Shepard. I really want to see a ball go in now. Really want to see a ball go in off this break. Well, he's still got two minutes, 56 seconds left on the clock, and that wouldn't be a particularly quick break and dish for, for Jordan Shepard. No. He's done plenty quicker than that. But... He's come up dry, and that's a disaster for him. He has actually potted a red. Oh, he did pot a red. He My has. apologies. So he does get the opportunity. 
It's not a great table, though. And he potted that opening shot just a fraction thick, which is why the white didn't spin across the left-hand side. That's unfortunate. He's just tied that red up on the bottom cushion. He might still be just about OK. If he can drop this into the middle, he might leave the angle on the red to kick it out next yeah. shot. We may have to jack the white up now, the, the cue ball up to get to the bottom of the white. Oh, he can play a plain ball. Yeah. Oh, now, can he? He's on this. He is on it. He is on it. Oh, what an incredible visit to the table by Jordan Shepard. This is a shootout. This is got shootout written all over it. What a finish this will be. Well, that is brilliant. Shootout in the final. A one minute break and dish from Jordan Shepard. And he was nowhere after two shots. We were, I was thinking, how can he develop this? How can he make this happen? Comes up with two big shots and makes certain of the finish with the last couple of pots. And we are all tied up at 4-4. One minute, 20 seconds left on the clock. Will Liam go for the bigger break? <laughs> what do you think? Yes. Wow. That is brave. I was absolutely convinced he was tapping and going for the black ball shootout. I stand incredibly corrected there. Now let's see if Liam turns into Jordan and runs around the table or whether he accepts the fate and lets it go to the black ball shooter. Yeah, and he's taking his time on this first shot. There's 45 seconds left on the clock. And Liam Dunster yeah. is saying, let's have a black ball shootout. And Jordan is not having any of it. What can you do, oh, Jordan wow. Shepard? Oh, Jord. Now I'm not sure what I want to happen. Twenty seconds on the clock. He can't do this. I'm not he sure it's possible. It. I think he's almost realized he can't do it. <laughs> this is brilliant. Oh my word. Oh my word. Six, five. Oh four, my word. Three. The white's not gonna stop in time. Oh. Oh. That's unbelievable from Jordan Shepard. He is one second no. out from winning the title. And he is questioning whether he had time for it or not. But the, cho the yeah. clock had definitely gone. Yeah. He was 100%. definitely out of time. A hundred percent that clock has gone. The referee is having a chat with the timekeeper and Jordan Shepard's trying to get involved and say, no, I did that in time, but he was clearly uh, one second out. This is going to a black ball shootout. That white ball, unfortunately, had not even stopped rolling until the clock had finished. So unbelievable. I have to say, I know he didn't complete the finish, but that was probably one of the most incredible visits to the table I think I've ever seen on a pool table. Absolutely ridiculous. That's unbelievable. He had five balls left with 20 seconds yeah, to go. Absolutely. But they were, it wasn't like they were five balls in the open. They no. were five balls all over yeah. the place. He had to make doubles and swing the white around the table. Absolutely. Absolutely mad. incredible. Well, we have talked about it all weekend long. We wanted to see a black ball shootout, and we've had to wait all the way till the final. So just to recap the rules, it is like a penalty shootout in football. Each player will have five shots to pot this black from with the white anywhere behind the line. After five shots, whoever's in front will win the title. If it's still tied after five, stand we go to sudden if death. If you love the ball, stand up. If you love the ball, stand up. And if we go to sudden death, it will be spot to spot. So the white will have to be on the middle of the bulk line, on a brown spot, if you like, on, from a snooker table. Now, two players of Liam Dunster and Jordan Shepard's ability. If they were having this black ball shootout for a bit of fun in the club, they wouldn't miss. <laughs> Very the only thing that's going to make them miss is the pressure of the situation. Who's your pick, Simon? 
I, I can't call it. <laughs> I can't call it. I don't, I don't want to call it. No. Well, it's 1 0 to Jordan Shepherd. This could potentially go on for a very long time. Well, that's why the, the spot to spot was introduced because players at the, the elite level doing this, it can go on for a very long yeah. time. And a very calm Liam Dunster ties the scores up. You may notice the referee's also being very precise with the way the black's been put on the spot. We, we are taught that. We are taught to put it in exactly the same place every time, so there is no advantage to either player. Yeah, because the stripes on the black actually can have an Divide, effect. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Oh, Jordan Shepard's first two have been absolutely in the heart of the pocket. It's a bad miss from Liam Dunster. There was pressure on that. And I just want to point out that uh, Jordan Shepard showing some class there. The Absolutely. crowd were getting involved in that shot. And Jordan Shepard was appealing for quiet from the crowd. Just that shows the class yeah. of the guy. I think Jordan Shepard has found the shot. He is not going to miss this. No. I learned, I learned at the IPA Worlds that spot to spot, you don't go in off playing playing ball. Absolutely. I know that sounds really obvious, but I didn't I wasn't aware of this. Blew my mind. Oh, that's a great shot from Liam. That was the best one of the the three he's played so far. That was right in the heart. The first one was off the jaw, the second one was missed, but that one he has found it. But he now needs some help from Jordan Shepherd. Jordan is refusing to give him any. He's now one pot or one miss away from the title, from a third title on the trot. Liam needs to pot this to stay in. Well, Liam Dunster is going to make Jordan Shepherd pot to win. Let's see if Jordan's uh, kept his form just for this specific moment. Yeah, this black for the shout out, uh, <laughs> for the town shootout. I'm getting excited. <laughs> He's doing strange things to us, let alone them. And Jordan Shepherd is the town shootout champion once again. Third title on the trot. The only man ever to win these shootout events. Congratulations to him and congratulations to Liam Dunster who's played his part in an unbelievable final. I'm actually speechless. What we've all just witnessed and seen, we all wanted it to go to the Black Ball Shoes. Performed. What are, you, what are your words on it? What are your thoughts? I'm just got it. I lost it, to be honest. Oh, oh. It's a really easy shot to just put the black off the spot, and it's just, just bad few and just missed it. Um, just pure shot. And that's what cost me an end, but... Um, <laughs> I think, I think we all need to give him a big round of applause to our runner-up, Liam. I, I'm just to say congratulations to Shepard there, it was brilliant. I, I thought I had him, at, I think it was 3-1, and he's pointed his second last ball and screwed off Kush and bust his, his ball out. That, that was a great shot, and that's obviously, that's what won it from, to be honest. Did you feel in control for the full match? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I, I, well, apart from that, uh, the last three match 4 all, um, I was just kind of trying to waste time. But, um, 
I didn't really have enough time to think about what I was doing. I just thought, oh, I'll just play a safety shot. And then turns out he's like 30 seconds left to try and finish all the balls, and he's took 30 and a half. Well, one thing you two certainly did was use the shot clock to your advantage. You got the black ball shootout for all of you at home, for all the people in the arena, and it was epic. I think everyone's got nerves. But we just want to say a massive well done and a big congratulations. And this is our runner-up, guys, Liam Dunster. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. I've got no words for you. Three times our champion. You Tell him. this room you really are what's your, what's your thoughts on you three times you've won this that's like what are the odds on that um even money you'd swear you'd swear you'd swear this tournament was made for me um <laughs> so you've come into this tournament feeling confident feeling in control that was one of the hardest matches i've ever played obviously under the, the, the circumstances one of um he played obviously he played great he kept me under wraps he kept but luckily I found something um, when I really needed it. And I think I was a little bit cursed not to win 5-4. That would have been one of the best finishes I've ever done. Um, but to win it, obviously in my own club, all the people who's come tonight, obviously Zach, Will, everybody else. And it's just like, it's, it's been brilliant. Um, I, don't know really, I don't really know what to say, to be honest, because I can't believe I won. But um, yeah. You certainly, you certainly performed on that. How, like he just said, how does it feel to get that trick? You've got it once, you've got it twice, now got it three times. Um, I think I might get banned. <laughs> it might ban me. Are we going to ban him for the next one, guys? No. No, to be honest, I think Dunster probably should have won then, but luckily I had a, had a massive stroke of luck to, to get the chance off my break. I made a good finish to, to get four all, and obviously, as soon as he went four all, I thought, there's no chance I'm losing this. There's no chance I'm losing this. Because when it comes to queuing, I always feel like I'm gonna, gonna, um, never going to miss the balls. So I, always thought, I might buy a round, yeah, you're right. I might, might, um, I might, I might buy one, but obviously, I'm not sure if my lads will watch tonight, but um, big shout out to them. Obviously, the crowd has been amazing yesterday and tonight, and um, everyone who's involved getting the tournament together. Every, everyone who, um, the players, everybody, um, it's, a, it's a seriously special show what, what the lads and obviously yourself can put together, everyone who's turned up the club and everything, and um, I don't know, I'm not the best talker, but whatever. You've done absolutely amazing. Can we have a big round of applause for our winner, Jordan the Wizard Shepherd. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'd like to just... Well, I do Again. Can I just welcome Mr. Kevin Moyles from Orange Media to the Arena 2 to present the trophy to our winner. A few words from you as well, Kev. Yeah, we've got to wrap it up tonight. We're running short of time, but what an absolutely fantastic champion you have here. Jordan. The Welsh Wizard, Shepherd. So we're just going to finish off here thanking the sponsors, Town Billiards, KA Casino, Johnny Carr, Excel Cues, BlackballTables.com, English Blackball Pool Federation, OEAdvice.com, Simon Webb and Donna Coatsworth on commentary have been fantastic. 247.tv, who are your uh, film crew here? Brilliant. OrangeMedia.tv, obviously go there to get your town chalks and tips. You've got to give it a little plug, haven't you? And, uh, of course, uh, Donna, Asher, Will, Zach and Jay from Orange Media. Um, we are here at Murphy Sports Bar in Doncaster. And we want to give uh, Tommy Heckenbottom and his whole family. The winner tonight was Jordan Shepherd, but the real winner is Paul.
Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you.